the game industry. Hang on, because I need to wait at least seven seconds before I can say this next part or YouTube is going to demonetize this video. We at seven seconds yet? I think we're close. The game industry is fucked right now, but there is some hope. There is some pushback to some of the things that are really going bad at the moment. There is to say something that is overused here. There's some light at the end of the tunnel, maybe. <laughs> Before we get to that, and I will say we will end this video with something positive, I promise. Before we get to that, we have to kind of wade through the muck. It's a lot of it's a lot of muck. We have seen some really horrifying layoffs, studio closures and really just a very rough environment to be making video games. And that's before you get AI into it or anything like that. This is just to do with companies, big companies. But there have been few that have kind of highlighted all of the issues quite as well as Embracer Group. Now, Embracer Group, for those who don't know, was a kind of a small unknown company for a while. And then for about three years, they went around buying up everything they possibly could. All the IP rights they could, all of these things that they could, all these gaming studios, gaming studios that a lot of us will, will know. Studios like Gearbox, Crystal Dynamics, and Eidos Montreal, just to name a couple. IPs like the Lord of the Freaking Rings. And, and then they messed up. They lost out on a deal. The, the, the higher ups kind of screwed the thing that they're supposed to be good at and, and failed. Which is funny because it doesn't seem like they're the ones that, that that really paid for it. Now, I don't know much about the inner workings of the business, and I don't know how this deal fell apart because we don't get any money details about it. We don't actually even know who it was going to be with. We have rumors, but that's about it. We do know that it's, it was about a two billion dollar deal and it fell through like in dramatic fashion. And then the COO kind of maybe eventually like like resigned, but then went and made his own game company. And, and then now we come to today where we have almost 1400 layoffs for Embracer across their different studios, lots of canceled projects a closed studio and perhaps more closed studios or studios being sold off and perhaps even more layoffs. Layoffs being people, humans, humans with jobs, like people like you and I losing their jobs over this. And that I think is a frustration that I have here. I, there's This is a human cost here to the people that are making the games that we love. And that's all bad enough, right? That's all <laughs> difficult enough to just swallow and then and then dear viewers then we get the lovely wonderful earnings call that really said the very quiet part out loud for everyone to hear in an earnings call just recently embracer said this about all the recent things going on boiling it down to our overruling principle is always maximize shareholder value in any given situation. The fuck? You're talking about your company. You are gutting pieces of your company, humans that work for your company and give the company its value. I don't know if you know, but it, it, the Embracer Group itself isn't what a lot of the value is. It is the people making the fucking games that are giving it the value. That is where the value is. The, the, the talent, the heart, the soul of the gaming industry is the people making the damn games. <sighs> I tend not to get upset or, or angry in these videos. I tend to try and just be positive and, and, but damn, this is annoying. It is a frustrating thing. And I knew it was going to be frustrating, so I considered not even making a video about it because I didn't want to make an angry video. But, you know, I think it's necessary again because this whole point of this video is I want to highlight the human cost here. I want to highlight that the that, that 1400 is not just a number. There are actual people working on those games across all different across all different parts of, of game development. They are, they are actual people like you and I. And I think we can do a little bit better by just kind of humanizing 
the, the, the loss is there a little bit. Something that another gaming company has actually been doing very, very well. A gaming company that has had quite a few stages to actually talk about a little bit and hasn't shied away from it unless they're being told to wrap it up. At the 27th annual DICE Awards, Larian continued cementing its place as an appreciated gaming company with their acceptance speech for their Game of the Year award. It's a speech that I wanted to share with you and just in case you hadn't had the opportunity to hear it yet. So here it is. Uh, this is existential to us, as you can tell from all the emotion on David's face. Uh, we're very lucky. We've had a lot of stage time. Uh, others are not so lucky. This is a really human industry, and we're really bad sometimes at showing that, showing developers what they're worth and showing the players at home that we care about them. It's kind of the elephant in the room, especially surrounded by all this opulence, which you know, it can only go so far. Without people, we would not be standing here. Without the people that work on these games, we would not be standing here. Many, many people were let go uh, at the start of this year. I want you all to know that you are talented and that you matter and that you are the future of this industry. <laughs> Don't let that flame be extinguished by our collective mistakes. I know that everyone here is scared because shit's really fucked up. All of your projections are wrong, and it's scary. But we persevere as an industry, we will persevere as an industry, and you will all find your place, and you will all be welcomed back with open arms, and we'll still be making games for the players, and for you, and uh, with these guys. So. To, to add to that, uh, a lot of people probably want to know what's the secret to your success. Um, last year I started thinking the secret to our success is the decisions that we make come from what does the player want, what do I think is best for the game, what is the most fun, what is the most crazy. People telling us we shouldn't do this uh, or we can't do it or this is too challenging or too hard, like it was already said here today that usually just gives us a kick up the arse to actually make it happen. Um, the stuff that we make at Larian is we ask you to pay one price only for the game and that's it. You can own it for the rest of your life. We, we don't have shareholders, but we also don't think about them. And we, we think there's, there's an expression in Dutch that uh, honesty lasts longest or something. I, there's, there's probably a version in English as well that makes a lot of sense. But what we have tried in the last 20 years is to treat people like we would like to be treated ourselves as players, as gamers. So we don't make decisions where we, take, where we think this could make us the most money. On the long run, building a community, building a player base, building games that are actually fun is going to make you the most money. That's it. Thank you. See, I told you at the beginning that I would end with something positive, right? And there's more to that. There, there's Baldur's Gate 3 success is far from the only indie game that has been doing well. We live in a world where games that are done by single developers like Stardew Valley can have tremendous success and bring a lot of joy to people. Similarly, we have games like, like Baldur's Gate 3, which is being developed by Larian, a, a studio that seems to care about their, their employees and their developers. And then you have other games like Sea of Stars did, like, and you have small studios or indie studios that are, are creating some new and interesting things and some exciting games that are on the horizon, like Fall of Avalon or Nightingale or Palworld or Enshrouded. There are games being made by new studios and I'm hopeful that a lot of these people that were have been laid off across the industry will find new jobs or create their own studios and find places where they can, can you know, kind of put forth the the, the, the dreams that they have for to making games, because I think that's when we get the best games. When developers are able to put their passions into the games they're making. 
If you're interested in one of those, I just recently reviewed Fall of Avalon right here. It's a game that's been kind of, they kind of describe as a, a double A game, but I, I had a really good time with it. And I feel like they're getting a bit more close to the AAA than, than you might think, especially in the graphics department. It's a bit of uh, like Skyrim and Camelot. My name is Redward Flynn. Thank you so, so much for watching. And I, I don't, I don't know, hug, hug a dev, go, go to pirate software's chat and give him a hug or something. I don't know. Just cheers everyone and let's be a little bit nice to each other.